Okay, so we're going to have a look at a really interesting puzzle to do with prime numbers here. So let me explain what the puzzle is. Basically, you're traveling along the number line, starting at the number two. You start off with two liters of fuel, then for each unit you go along to the right, you use one liter of fuel. But then fortunately, whenever you pass a prime number, you pick up that many liters of fuel to help keep you going. You start off at two, you've got two liters, then to reach three, you have two liters, you use one of those, but then you gain three liters. So by the time you pass three, you've got four liters, and then to go to five, you use two of those four liters, then you gain five liters, so you're up to seven liters. To go from five to seven, you start with seven liters, you've used two of those, but then you pick up another seven liters, so you're all the way up to 12 liters of fuel there. And then to go from seven to 11, you start off with 12, you've used four to reach that next prime number, then you gain 11 liters, so you're all the way up to 19 liters, and so on. So the question is, how far can you go in this scenario? Can you keep going forever? Will you eventually run out of fuel? Because you might be aware the prime numbers get more and more spread out on average as they get larger and larger. But then at the same time, you are picking up more fuel each time, so maybe it cancels out. So if you're interested, do have a go at this by yourself. I will, I'll give you a little hint that you may wish to use a really nice result called Bertrand's Postulate, which is a really helpful result to do with the distribution of prime numbers. And this basically tells you that for any integer n greater than 1, there has to be a prime number, we'll call it p, in the interval between n and 2n. So for example, between 10,000 and 20,000, the transpostulate tells us that there has to be at least one prime number in that interval. So we'll use this in a sec to try and solve this problem. So in order to solve this problem, it's helpful to first try and express this in terms of properties of prime numbers. So we've got a really precise kind of wording of the problem. And essentially all you need to do is, for each prime number, so if we start labelling them as the first prime number is P1, the second prime number is P2, and so on, all you need to do is basically show that the amount of fuel you've got left after a certain prime number is greater than or equal to the amount of fuel needed to reach the next prime number. So let's just work some of these things out. So the total fuel you've got after the first prime number, so the first prime number is 2, is just P1, or 2. The total fuel you've taken in by the second prime number is P1 plus P2. And this is more than the amount of fuel you've got left, but we'll calculate those in a sec. And by the time you reach the third prime number, it's P1 plus P2 plus P3. And if you want to reach the nth prime number, the amount of fuel you've taken in is just P1, sum of all those up to Pn. And then the fuel left, well, the first one you haven't actually traveled any distance, this is just P1. The fuel left for the second one is P1 plus P2, but then take away the distance you've travelled. So remember you started at 2, so basically the amount of distance you've travelled is P2 minus 2. And then these two P2s here cancel, which gives you P1 plus 2. as your amount of fuel left after the second prime number. And then the amount of fuel left for the next one, P1 plus P2 plus P3, but then take away the distance you've travelled, which is P3 minus 2 there. And once again, you'll see your P3s now cancel, and you're going to get P1 plus P2, and then plus an extra 2 as well as your amount of fuel left. And now we need to work out the amount of fuel that you need to reach the next prime number. So from P1, the amount of fuel that you need to reach the next one, this is actually really simple, it's just P2 minus P1. The amount of fuel you need to reach the next prime number from P2, well, it's just the distance, from P2 to P3, which is P3 minus P2. And then similarly, from P3 to reach the next prime number, you just need to be able to travel P4 minus P3 units. So let's try and formulate this just in terms of n, then we can solve the general problem. So basically, we want to show that for all n integers greater than or equal to 1, essentially what we need to show is that the fuel left is greater than or equal to the fuel needed. And what does this mean? Well, the fuel left, this is basically it's P1 plus all the way up to Pn minus the distance you've traveled, which is Pn minus 2. And you need to show that this is greater than or equal to the amount of fuel you need to reach the next prime number, so your next little refilling station. And this is just Pn plus 1 minus Pn. So we want to show that this inequality is true for all n. And you'll see here your pn's cancel, and then you get this. We can write it with sigma notation, your sum from k equals 1 up to n 
of pk, your kth prime number, and then there's also a plus 2. That's not part of the sum, so I just put that in brackets. And you basically just need to show that this is greater than or equal to the next prime number, pn plus 1. So this is what we want to show, and now it's in a format where we can try to use this Bertrand's postulate. So now to actually solve this problem, we're going to hopefully use Bertrand's postulate to get a nice upper bound on this prime number pn plus 1 that will work in general. So let's think really carefully about what Bertrand's postulate tells us. So if we apply this to the kth prime number, this is basically saying that for all k greater than or equal to 1, there exists a prime number p in the interval between pk and 2pk. And this is particularly useful, actually, because this is telling us that if you've got your prime number pk, the next prime number must occur before you get double pk. So if I write this sort of more formally, what this is telling us is that for all k greater than or equal to 1, pk plus 1 has to be less than or equal to 2 times pk. And this is going to be sort of the really useful inequality we're going to use here. Because now we're trying to bound pn plus 1 from above, so let's just start off, so for all n greater than or equal to 1, p of n plus 1, this is less than or equal to 2 times pn. If I write this as pn plus pn, you'll see this is actually really useful because now we can apply a similar bound to pn. You know that this has to be less than or equal to 2 times pn minus 1, which is equal to pn minus 1 plus pn minus 1. So our overall bound then for pn plus 1 is now pn plus pn minus 1 plus pn minus 1. And you might be able to see where we're going next. We can bound this from above by pn minus 2 plus pn minus 2, and so on. And you keep going basically here until you get pn plus pn minus 1, and it's really starting to look like this kind of sum that we want in our upper bound. And then if we go down to p2, and then you also get a plus p1 plus p1 from your upper bound, on this remaining p2. But then don't forget that p1, the first prime number, this is actually just equal to 2. So what does this give us? This gives us pn plus pn minus 1 plus all the way down to p2 and p1 plus 2. And if we write this in sigma notation, you'll see this is exactly the upper bound we've been trying to show. So you get the sum from k equals 1 to n of the kth prime number pk plus 2, where the 2 isn't part of the summation. So there you go, we've proved the upper bound, and this shows that on this journey along the number line, you can actually keep going forever. The primes are sufficiently close together that you'll always have enough fuel to keep going.